Hello, Internet. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for joining us today on the channel. And thanks to Marshall Music for uh, letting me have a quick look at this. And this is the Epiphone Prophecy SG in Tiger Red Aged Gloss, they call it. So, uh, yeah, let's get cracking. Since my last video, I've been um, implementing a uh, score sheet. So stick around to the end of the video to see how this one fares. The last video I did was the sister or the brother of this one, which was the Les Paul version. And that had four buttons. This one's only got two. I'm actually quite accustomed to seeing SG type guitars with four buttons. So I'm not sure why they went with two here. But uh, let's, uh, let's get on and let's get on to the specs. The body material is mahogany and it's got a top maple cap with a triple A maple flamed veneer. The body finish is aged gloss. The color on this particular model is red tiger. Neck material is mahogany with an asymmetrical slim taper with a 12 inch ebony fretboard. And then the fingerboard inlays are perloid blocks with abalone triangles. It's got 24 jumbo frets. Nut material is a, the Graftec Newbone XL Black. It's got the standard Epiphone Tunomatic Bridge with stop bar tailpiece. It's got Grover Locking Rotomatic Tuners. Uh, the neck and the bridge pickups are the Fishman Fluence Propriety Humbuckers. Controls are one volume and one tone with a three-way toggle switch. Standard strings fitted are 10 to 46. It's on sale at the moment, special price, but that might not last, so head on to Marshall Music and go grab yours quickly. Okay, let's get onto the sounds, because I'm sure you're all waiting for that. And as per usual, I'm just going through my uh, Ampero, and these are my gigging sounds. And I have basically two banks, one for humbucking guitars and one for single coil guitars. And another thing I just want to mention is that the sounds that you're going to hear are not the definitive sounds of this guitar. Uh, through an amp it'll sound different, through your pedals it'll sound different, but to my ears this is where I would possibly set them. So yeah, on this particular guitar the volume knob is meant to, I'm going to say emulate a split coil because I actually managed to measure the output on this particular guitar, on the previous guitar, which is the Les Paul, I, I somehow couldn't get a reading. They read 18.2 ohms, which is very high. It's the highest I've ever seen, in fact. And when I pulled the split coil emulation, I was expecting 10, but it stayed exactly at 18.2. And that goes for both pickups. They were both exactly the same reading. So I'm not sure if they are, they are identical pickups. They could be. Um, I didn't open them up to see. But uh, so when Epiphone says split coil, um, we need to take it with a pinch of salt because it's not really split coil. I think what's happening is that the EQ curve is just changing like this. But you'll hear that for yourself. It's a very subtle change. In my last video, I could barely tell the difference. Um, let's see if we have a bit of better luck on this guitar. Um, so yeah, here we go. This is then just the clean neck position. So that's humbucker mode, split coil. We'll go into the second voicing, which only works when the volume tone is in the down position.
Mm. I'll just go through those sounds in quick succession. Split coil. Voice two. So as I say, very subtle. I'm not really hearing it, but that could just be the fact that I'm using a um, multifix pedal. Maybe if you're using pedals and an amp, you might have different results. But anywho, let's carry on. So here's the middle position. Split. Voice two. We'll move to the bridge. And to be honest, I would never use a bridge in a clean sound environment. I would always put a bit of dirt on it, which we'll get to just now. But anyway, here is the sound. Split. We'll get there. Uh, second voice. So just for your reference, I'm going to go through all the sounds very quickly so you can just see what the differences are. So you'll just see me switching and I'm just going to hit them quickly. Just one chord. So there we have it. Let's add a bit of dirt. And I'll, I'll just bypass the middle position and we'll just go through the neck and the bridge. Split coil. Second voicing. Bridge, full humbucker. Split coil. Second voicing. So there we go, let's go into full overdrive mode. I'll just, I'll just play a chord so you can hear sonically what's going on. That was the neck, let's go to the bridge. Let's check the sustain. Plenty to stand there for you. I think this guitar is probably more suited to the heavy rock um, type of scene than, uh, than blues or jazz because the pickups are so hot. Let's quickly go through my um, 
my metal sound. I'm not a metal player, but just so you can hear how this guitar drives this sound. Could you play Prince with this? Probably. So let's talk about the fit and finish. This one is also finished in this um, sort of a satin finish. And just a quick tip, if you just get yourself a microfiber cloth, okay, and try and get the one that's got the, um, the finer loops in it. They're a bit more expensive, but it'll be worth it. Just add a bit of soap, just, just one or two drops of dishwashing liquid, run it under the tap, Wring it out, let it dry for a bit so it's not wet, but it's just cold to the touch. Then you can clean these guitars and it won't harm the finish at all and it'll take all the fingerprints off. Um, the problem with um, the issue with these semi gloss guitars is that if you get any scratches or wear marks anywhere on the guitar, then uh, you won't be able to buff that out because obviously, if you buff this finish, It'll go shiny, and then that'll look a bit odd. So that's the situation with the semi-gloss guitars. The finish is nice and even. I'll give it that much. And um, I'm not seeing on this particular guitar any flaws as far as the paintwork is concerned. The frets and the fret ends I would say they're average. They're not fantastic because I can feel a couple of sharp points, but you won't slice your fingers. But um, in this price range, I have felt slightly better. The nut is a Graftec Newbone XL nut. And I will just say that on this version, on this very guitar, the nut is slightly not centered. So I can feel a bit of a ridge here and not one over here. So it's probably best you go into the guitar shop and find the one where you find you're happy and satisfied with the fit and finish of that particular guitar that you might want to buy. The frets are a bit rough. So what I'm saying is when you doing a vibrato, you can actually hear the frets uh, obviously not when it's plugged in, but they're a bit scratchy. So a bit of extra care could have been taken in the factory just to polish those a little bit better, I find. It's got the new headstock shape. And some people will like this. Other people will prefer the older version. And yet other people again will want the full open book headstock. But the nice thing about this is it's got the nice big custom logo over there. So that's very cool. Yeah. I find that when this tone pot, when I swivel it, it's a bit wobbly on its axis. It's not nice and straight. The volume pot is nice and even. The hardware is all brushed. And when I say brushed, I mean that lightly because um, all of this hardware started off as normal chromed hardware and they've taken some seems to be like a scotch bright and they just quickly maybe on a wheel they just ran it against there to just scratch it up a bit so the brushing is not very even around the corners there's no brushing it's basically just the top that's been brushed uh, so just be aware of that uh, it's not a problem I'm just saying they could have spent a little bit more time and effort on giving us a nice brushed finish. I've seen some other guitars where the brushing is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but in this case, that's not the case. Um, we get nice Grover locking tuners. And unlike the Les Paul that I tested before this video, the set on these were actually nice and smooth. The previous one was not quite as smooth. They weren't even. 
Uh, whereas on this particular model, they are, they are nice and smooth. So that's happy days for that one. Um, you do have obviously the double material block inlays on the fretboard. The fretboard, of course, is ebony on this particular one. And you've got a perloid block with an abalone triangle. And that is actual abalone. And the headstock inlay is also a mother of pearl. Whereas the block inlays, the, the white part, that's a perloid. So that's a synthetic pearl. Neck feels very comfortable in the hand. It's a little bit slim, but I think one would expect that on a guitar like this. Um, because it's, I think it's more for the very hard rock, speed, metal kind of stuff. It's not for blues and jazz. And uh, normally the necks on those are a bit flatter. But what I am finding, by the way, is that the neck carve, it seems to be, but that's maybe just an illusion. It seems to be that the top part of the carve is rounder than the bottom part, where the bottom part just tapers away into the top, which is a very nice feeling because that's basically how your hand naturally grabs it. But I don't have the right tool to measure that exactly, and it's not mentioned anywhere, but just as I'm running my finger along it here, it feels like that the bottom end is flatter than the top. The top has got a bit of a, um, a sharper curve to it so that's I think that's quite quite nice actually because it just fits naturally into the palm of your hand so happy days on that um, all the binding is starts off white and you'll see that in the photo and when they put the clear lacquer on they tint the lacquer to give you a uh, slightly aged look so that's cool to change the battery you just pull you just push on this little tab the battery flap pops up, pull the battery out, and stick it back. So, rocking. Fit and finish, we've spoken about. Water, water, water. You're getting some very nice hardware. We've been through that. We've getting Grover tuners, um, an ebony board, some nice pearl and uh, abalone inlays. You're getting the uh, Fishman Fluence pickups, some nice hardware, push-pull buttons. All the voicings that are possible out of these pickups. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a bag. So that you'll have to get separately. And when I look at the competition, I'll be honest, there are some similar priced guitars that do come with bags. So if that's your main priority, then you might need to find something that's got a bag. But a bag is not uh, the most expensive thing in the world. But I believe that in this price range, there should be a bag at least. But uh, as it is, there isn't one. Right, for the fit and finish, I found that the guitar was pretty well put together. I didn't see any major issues. Um, the clear coat is nice, the appointments are nice, some little niggles here and there, but I will give this a 7 out of 10. Equipment supplied. Uh, it does lose some points for not getting a bag in this price range. Um, the hardware is nice, nice Grover tuners, push pulls, Fishman Fluence pickups, so I'm going to give this one an 8. Playability and feel. As I mentioned, the neck is very nice. Uh, the fret ends could have been better. The fret polishing could have been a little bit better. So I'm going to give this one a 7. Sound. If I just ignore all the push-pulls and the slight subtle differences and I just look at this as an SG, um, the sound is actually very good. So I'm going to give this one a 8. I don't think you can go wrong with uh, this particular guitar. So I'm going to give this one, excluding the bag, which I, should, I think should have been part of the deal, I'm going to give this one actually a 7. So there we go, guys. 
A quite respectable 37 out of 50 for this guitar. Who'd have thought, eh? Um, so uh, thanks again, once again, to Marshall Music for um, sending this to me. Very nice of you, thank you. And uh, if you like this kind of video, then uh, please hit the like and subscribe button below. And please check the affiliate link down below. And if you're in the area, you can go grab yourself one of these at Marshall Music. And uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.